lounge and sun. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan, and I am back with another mailbag episode. Another episode where I'm going to go through some of the comics that you guys sent to me. It's a lot of dope indie stuff. Um, I decided kind of with the last one, I'll probably do about five cartoonists or per episode to kind of kind of, you know to kind of keep it concise. That way, I you know got an, uh, enough to kind of spread out over a few episodes. Um, if you do want to be spotlighted on the Mailbag series, uh, just drop me a line. Uh, the, you can hit me up on social media. Uh, the email link is down below as well. You can email me there. That might be the best way. And then uh, I'll let you know the next steps. But I love the response so far. I've gotten a lot of dope stuff. It's going to lead to not just the, these Mailbag episodes, but it's going to lead to some indie creator spotlights, some creator commentary episodes that I'm going to get in the works. It's a lot of stuff to schedule. So, uh, I'm definitely going to get into some of the stuff today. Got five dope cartoonists that sent me their stuff, and uh, let's get into it. So we got a couple issues of the city. Troy David, writer. Dickie Sirigar is the artist, and the colorist, Dave Pretorius, the guy who sent me these awesome comics. So super dope. Really excited to get into it. Um, you know, it was suggested to me that when I go through these, probably kind of, you know, just kind of show off a little bit of the book, not kind of show every page leave a little bit for everybody to kind of check out on their own but definitely a dope book love the art style coloring is phenomenal Dave you did a great job so I'm super stoked to get in, in into this a little bit deeper this is a comic book that you know I'd love to you know maybe have a indie creator spotlight with the, with maybe all three of the guys that, that did the book you know kind of unpack that from there but really cool book really excited to uh to check these out a little bit further. And I love, I love in the back, got a list of backers that supported this book, which I'm assuming was Kickstarter for each, each one. I, I have, I never saw these on Kickstarter. So this is, this is the first time I'm even hearing about the book. Uh, you got a little bit of some process pages in the back and got the, the contact for that. Uh, by the way, I, like I didn't say before, all the all the people involved in the books, links are going to be down below so you guys can hit them up, pick up the books, and follow them on uh, Instagram and stuff like that. And you see all the stuff that they're getting up to currently. So the first collection of the first two came out in 2022. This is, in I think, July. And then February 2023 is the latest one. It's really good coloring on this book. Really dig this. You definitely, I, I love the use of the color to kind of set the mood for this. I love the the purples and the pinks. Kind of gives off a little bit of like an 80s, 80s kind of vibe to it. Love really good panels. I love the way you just see the brass knuckles, the blood dripping. Got some fucking uh, ninja type characters here. You know, there's some mafia type Yakuza that we saw earlier as well. So this is something that I'm definitely excited to uh, get further into. And it'll be cool, you know, more process pages like this. You got character sketches, preview for issue four. I got a little uh, afterword by the writer. Kind of, you know, just give a little backstory, you know, that this is uh, well past midnight on work week, but what a relief to finally be writing this. I like that, you know, so he's, you know, got a day job. You know, this is a project of love and passion that, you know, they're doing and great product, great uh, paper Great paper stock, you know. I'm I'm a huge uh, huge book nerd, so I, I pay attention to all that kind of stuff, and I think this is a really really nice product. Definitely go check these out. Next up, I got some books by uh, Anthony Bartolacci. I think is the way you would say it. I don't want to hope I didn't butcher that too much. He sent me uh, three of his books. I believe these are the print on demand. Yes, I believe they're print on demand. Usually that's what that indicates, and I believe I got them directly from Amazon. Uh, but yeah, these are pretty interesting. I, I flipped through them, you know, to right before I hit that record button. And uh, I love this too. So you got checkers on the beach, which is kind of funny. And you got these talking seagulls kind of definitely not for kids. I mean, there's a lot of cursing in this book, but I really dug it. It kind of reminds me of the pigeons from like Animaniacs and stuff like that. Um, but a little bit, uh, a little darker, a little more more mature, but definitely a fun little comic. Great art style. I really dug this one too. And Nick Fierro is the writer on this. Gull. Any of numerous long-winged, web-footed aquatic birds, ver and then the verb, to take advantage of one who is foolish and or unwary, deceive. 
So this is a fun little book. Then uh, we got this baby, <laughs> babies on a plane, milk, not milk comics. This one's a couple years old. So this one's done 2021. Anthony did everything on here. Sorted pencils, ink, colors, letters, all that good stuff. Really dig his uh, cartoony style. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Misimo, who I'm a huge fan of. Anybody uh, part of the Ringside Seats group, you'll, you'll definitely know Christian Misi, a.k.a. Misimo. He's been on here before. We've, we've tried with him about his comics. He's definitely somebody that's going to be on the Mailbag episode next time. Um, yeah, dude, this is a... This is a great, great showcase of his, of like the lettering, coloring, all that stuff. It's super violent. I'm here for it. Dude. Definitely, definitely a, a great book. And I always love these process pages in the back. Always a nice little added, uh, you know, thing to put in. I think, you know, suggestion wise, like I know I like to see it. I know I'm not the only one. So you know, you get a little bit of notes, the original layouts. You know, talking about how he did the character work, zoomed in layouts and sketches, and a little note about the author. I like this one too. And then this one is the one that really <laughs> stood out to me Silver Fox Golden Ops. So, Golden Girls having a fucking water gun war be based on this. I mean, he even drew the fucking varicose veins on, on their legs, <laughs> the wrinkles. This is hilarious, dude. Dedicated to mustache. I love you and I hope this embarrasses the hell out of you when you're old enough to read it. I want to know who the fuck mustache is, Anthony, so uh, shoot me a DM. Let me find out who that is. Um, so this is pretty dope. Silver Fox is the elderly's first line of defense, protecting senior citizen quality of life. We accomplish what others cannot accomplish because they're too old and frail. And go where others cannot because not everywhere is wheelchair accessible. <laughs> we are a law enforcement agency, but sometimes you pretend we are. We are not a law enforcement agency, but sometimes we pretend we are. We deal with many complex issues, ranging from counterterrorism to senior discounts being revoked. Silver Fox is a national organization established by the esteemed actress Bethy Wright in 1987, best known for her star role in the fossilized females in San Diego, California. This is hilarious. This is such a fucking funny concept, and... This is gonna. This I, I kind of want to do a creator commentary, Anthony. If you, if you're down, hit me up. We'll definitely get this under the under the microscope a little bit deeper and kind of talk about the the idea behind it, dude. I'd love to kind of pick your brain on this one. This is this is great. This is something that uh, I would want to see continued, man. This is this is funny stuff. Great cartoony, man. Look at that. I love I love this, dude. You did a hell of a fucking job on this. Good stuff. Good stuff, man. So, yeah. Love these books, dude. Links will be down below for all you guys listening and watching. Next up, I got some stuff from my boy Tommy Grooms. Bunch of mini comics we got here by Tommy. Got a lot of his uh, Space Cadet. So, it seems like that is the majority of what we got going on here. Space Cadet Canard. With all apologies to Jerry Siegel and Joe Shoes. Very cool, dude. So we got these single panel pages. I love I love the format of mini comics. I think they're fun little, you know, bite-sized, just min mini stories, dude. You know, just fun little thing to kind of check out. He's got five of those. I think we got, yeah, we got four of the Space Cadet stuff. So this one's a little, got a little bit more pages. Get your alien character as the main character i love this dude this is really cool and tommy somebody you know i didn't i didn't know he was making his own comics uh you know like there's a swap group on facebook you know where a sale and swap group where we you know sell comics and stuff trade comics with one another and i knew him from there and then he you know hit me up and told me he had some of his own stuff that he wanted to send and i i, I dig it dude this is really cool I don't know if you're doing these at home, putting them together yourself, but the quality is fucking phenomenal, dude. The rounded off corners, production quality on here is really good. It's all recent stuff, 2022, so you can get these directly from him. I, again, I will drop these links for you guys listening, watching, and stuff like that. And Really good stuff, really good stuff. And we got this, Attention Excess. This is a free one that he was giving out. Looks like just... Some random drawings. Pretty dope. Got this. Conflicted comics. Reflections on marital separation. 
So this looks like, the, okay, so these three are his most, most recent stuff. This is from 2023. This is a little bit more of a serious subject, obviously based on the, the title of the, of the book. I love this. This kind of reminds me of uh, Chester Brown a little bit. Tommy, got to get you on here for Indie Creator Spotlight, dude. Got to talk some, talk some shop with you, talk some comics. This is some great stuff, dude. I love the watercolor. Hopeful Comics, Reflections of Miracle Celebration. This is the companion piece to this. Kind of the lighter, the lighter uh, look at it. Good stuff, man. Noodle, a comics anthology for the pensive. So I love these, dude. I love these one-man anthologies. This is a bigger format than he normally does. Great stuff, man. Tommy, you need to promote your stuff more, dude. You got to get out there. You got to tell everybody all the stuff you got going on. Because like I said, I had no idea you were doing this stuff. But this is, this is some good comics. We'll get you on here for a chat. Everybody, go pick up his stuff. Next up, we got some stuff from Christopher Williams. A lot of stuff he sent me. A lot of good stuff. So we got... Petrillo, you know, a nice uh, kind of, I, I, all of his stuff is different formats, which I really like, different sizes, so, he do, you know, he doesn't limit himself, very talented cartoonist, so much different, like, mixed media, you can just see it with just in this, I'd love to kind of uh, pick his brain and see, like, how much is a mix of traditional, how much is digital, like, this is a cool little comic, we got The Best of Paco. 1943 to 2019, the best Paco strips from the pages of Oak Ridge Dispatch. Chris kind of talks about how this character, with like these comics were sent, you know, an envelope to the Oak Ridge Dispatch in 1949 and then kept coming all the time, almost almost daily. So I don't know if this is kayfabe or not, like is this, you know, but if he recreated this, but this is interesting. I like this, these little, you know, one panel comics. This is, got, I mean, this is pretty cool, man. I like this. Phenomenal, dude. Phenomenal. Oh, yeah. It's good stuff. And then we have a few of his... I'll jump into this one. So we got Back in Time. Little riff on uh, Back to the Future, obviously. You can tell just by the poses of the two main characters. Love time travel stuff. So this is this really stood out to me. Even even put him outside the JCPenney just like in the Back to the Future movies. But the time machine is an, act, an egg. So a little bit different, you know, obviously kind of switches it up. So, but a riff on the Back to the Future story, dude. And I, that's probably my favorite movie. It's usually the movie somebody asked me and I, I'm like, yeah, that's my favorite movie. I, I've watched that movie so many times. So to see his take on it, kind of riffing on that movie, time travel and stuff. This was uh, definitely a dope book. I don't want to spoil too much of that. But look at this. I mean, he's just so many different books. we got Artifacts as well some of his older stuff so you can see the kind of like you know the growth of him as an artist this is 2020 this is 2022 so like just in a couple of years his art seems to kind of take you know leaps and bounds he's changing up styles mixing different media types and in, in with it we got radio i love the name of his publishing company too plastic flame press what a great name Story of three women, strangers with a vital bond that is in danger of crumbling. The image of radio signal leaving the antenna to travel relentlessly onward about that of a Kaikeda, 17 years underground, only to burst into sunlight, sing love, and then die in a matter of weeks. This beautifully rendered narrative is by turns tender and devastating, conjuring a gauzy atmosphere over pages and then in one image jarring the reader out of reverie as it grapples with the prospect that a life can be altered, that the bridge can be rearranged and remain passable. What a great, uh, what a great description of this book, man. I love this. And then up here, imagine you're standing on a bridge stretching into the distance before you. You can turn around and see it fade into the horizon, but you can only walk the other way. Imagine sections of the bridge begin to disappear. The only way through disintegrating the tightrope frame behind and ahead of you. Dude's immensely talented, man. So the next book we got is The Bones. It explores the end of the road as someone cut off from reality begins to succumb to age and disease. Where does that person go? Who can they trust? What is their impetus to live when their life is barely lived at all? Chris, this is a, a phenomenal package you sent me, man. I am super excited to, to get you on here for an interview. Maybe go through a couple of these books as well for some creator commentary. This is uh, some awesome stuff. Thank you so much for sending this. Everybody listening, watching, you know the deal. Go uh, follow them. 
Click those links down below. And last up, but not least, we got Kurt Burdick. The Lacto Pit Fighter are his books that he sent me. Uh, we got the first one here. We got the Requiem for a Human Z. Uh, and then obviously, on, uh, you guys already probably saw this, but Death of Power. His, uh, his riff on the death of Superman. Which, if you're watch, if you watch Cartoonist Kayfabe, you know what this is. This is the first of many uh, Death of Superman books that people have been, you know, kind of doing their own thing on. I know there's another book that's coming out that will I will also be featuring on the channel. But Kurt was kind enough to send me some of his books, dude. So I definitely would love to kind of showcase these off to you guys today. Galacto Pit Fighter in Hard Sentience. This was done in 2021 and um this dude is so talented i'm so shocked that i haven't discovered his stuff sooner um i love i love his style his coloring lettering i mean he does it all right he gets super graphic in here and the level of detail that he puts into it is it's next level dude i love this character here galacto impaler of galaxies such a great design and the teeth, the eyeball knocking out the head being completely... He's decapitated. Fucking insane, dude. I love this. Eating the dog. I mean, my God. I, I won't get too too far into it, but again, you know, we got a little back matter. A little bit of a supplemental material. Not so much back matter, but like talking about the world and stuff. We got a couple pinups by some other artists in here. So I, I'm guessing this too was probably... a. A Kickstarter? I, I, I mean, there's a lot of people named in the back. Again, like I wish I was kind of in the know about this. I did. I did not see this uh, being uh, crowdfunded. This is definitely a book that would have stood out, would have made me kind of turn my head and pick up. And you know, he kind of. You can see like each one of these books is a different size. The paper quality too, like this thick cardstock, phenomenal little bit larger page again just you know you can even see it from the from that issue to this even just getting a little bit more comfortable with the medium is layouts decapitated heads like alien heads floating with their blood just dripping in there it's 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 fucking crazy <laughs> oh my god this is a unicorn uh this is crazy man this is some good stuff it's, it's clear why he's the the perfect person to do and completely outlaw style of the death of superman we got some more supplemental material right here in the back got another pinup and uh the big boy here death of power this is a thick comic this is not like thin paper every single page is almost the thickness of a backing board this cover itself like this is a this is a an object this is something in my opinion, probably underpriced. I mean, like he's putting a lot of money in this. The coloring, everything. Uh, I won't get too f into this, but just flip through it real quick. I'll skip some pages so we're not spoiled. Uh, his version of Superman fighting Doomsday and it's phenomenal, phenomenal. It is so good. Look at this back cover too. Like fucking Superman head is completely gone. There's body fluids everywhere. Kurt, you did a hell of a job on these books. I know we already talked before, but we're going to get you on. We're going to go through some of these books and uh, do some, uh, get an interview going, creator commentary, you know, all these books. There's so much good stuff that you guys are sending me, and uh, I'm so stoked, so, so excited to be able to kind of showcase this stuff to all of you guys watching. Links are down below for everybody, and, you know, once again, if you want to be spotlighted, on the mailbag episodes, drop me uh, drop me a DM on, on any social media. I, I respond pretty quickly. Um, you can email me, thecomicloungepod at gmail.com. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that. Hit the bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid goes up. And on that note, I'm out.